ministry. In Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, commencing with verse 1, you will find these words. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genezareth and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. I want to lift up for you from this fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, verse number six, to guide us through the process of our message this morning. I'm lifting up, Sister Sanders, Luke chapter five, verse six. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. I want to talk to you about broken things broken things. The Lake of Genezareth is more commonly known as the Sea of Galilee. I've had the privilege to visit there on several occasions. It's not a large lake, but it's a scene of breathtaking beauty. It's a body of water in the Holy Lands. It's surrounded by rolling hills and clean, narrow beaches, and was more than once a point of ministry for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On this occasion, in a borrowed ship, the sea amplified our master's voice to a large crowd standing and sitting on the shorelines to hear his life-saving words. And when you think about it, Jesus was a great borrower. Yes, yes, he borrowed the womb of Mary to come into this world. He borrowed a little child to teach us a lesson on faith. He borrowed a little boy's lunch to feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. He borrowed a man's mule to ride into Jerusalem on that uh, day they celebrated his coming. Right. He borrowed another man's house to hold his last supper and to institute the Holy Eucharist. As a matter of fact, he borrowed a man's tomb right. to lie down for three days and three nights. He was a great borrower, and on this occasion he borrowed the a fisherman's boat to serve as a pulpit. I'm sure you are familiar or have read or at least heard 
this story or this uh, miracle of the draw of fish. It presents to us without a doubt that our Lord's ship sets forth his call to service and duty. I wanted to walk you down this path in order to talk to you about broken things. Their nets break. Verse 6 provides the foundation upon which I wanted to build this premise of our text today. As you recall, these men, several of them who later became our Lord's closest companions, disciples, and first apostles, were out fishing. It was their usual occupation, and they were experienced fishermen. Now, I'm not much of a fisherman, but I do know that to be successful at fishing requires a lot of patience. Any fishermen here with me today? Yeah. Uh, I like the sport of fishing. Uh, I like baiting the hook and casting out the line and reeling in the catch. But if the fish are not biting, I'm not the one who's going to sit on the bank or in the boat without a catch all day long. Real fishermen can do that. They can go on the banks or in the boat and sometimes catch nothing and enjoy themselves. I don't have that kind of patience. If they're not biting, I'm on my way home. These men had uh, fished all night long. And the Bible says that they had caught nothing. The record is that they had toiled, which is an indication that they had invested some sweat equity into their labors without reward. Some of you who are listening to me now have invested a great deal into your goals and aspirations and your dreams, and it appears that nothing is happening for you. But let me tell you, Failure is not a factor at this point. I believe it, the expression was accredited to Abraham Lincoln, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. I mean, when you have come to a point of failure, you need to just step back, regroup, and restart the process all over again. Now, there is a poem whose author is unknown that provides the inspiration for many who have come to this point of depression and disappointment. The poem says, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you are trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but all you can do is sigh. When cares are pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometime learns. And many a fellow turn about when they might have won if they just stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may just succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and fallen man. And often the struggle of giving up when we might have captured a victory's cup and learn too late when the night came down, how close we were to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It might be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight. 
when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. These future patriarchs of the Christian church have been toiling all the night long and they have caught nothing. And now they are washing their nets, tired, probably hungry. They have not decided against fishing. They are just getting ready to quit for the day. When Jesus turns to them, having used their ships for a pulpit, and said to them, let down your net for a drop. The story is really one of many miracles of the Bible, and there are several lessons to be learned here from what this miracle you know, most people don't understand that God is still in the miracle working business. And I want to share with you this morning that it may seem a little difficult now as we're still on lockdown. Numbers of COVID-19 are on the rise and we're learning of many more folk who are closer to us contacting this dreadful virus and disease. But uh, I want you to know that God is still in control. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I've said uh, to you before, being a Christian does not exempt us from disease. Lord, help me here today. Uh, being a Christian does not exempt you from contacting coronavirus. Yeah, but we must remember that our God is still able. We have to be like Ananiah, Azariah, and Michelle, better known to us as Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego, who said to King Nebuchadnezzar, even if he don't deliver us, we know that he's able to deliver us. And we must think that uh, uh, and know that if we pray, God will answer our prayer. I want to say to you today that sometimes God answers our prayers on this side of life. And sometimes he answers our prayers on the other side of life. I wish I had some help in here. Yeah. Then I want to remind you of that adage that said, if you pray, don't worry. And if you worry, there's no need to pray. It is true, there are some wonderful results. But miracles require some actions on our part. Actions when the goal seems impossible. Work calls for rest and faith. And when the circumstances may call but doubt. If we can put those things into action, we will discover the Lordship of Christ, God's care for our physical needs, the power of Christ over the natural, and that God's power to bless is greater than our capacity to contain. He has the ability to provide more than what we can even think or ask that we simply put our trust in him. After Peter's brief argument with Christ that they had toiled all night long and caught nothing, we discover his willingness to obey at the words of the master, to let down their nets and uh, catch a draw. I want to tell you that we may have some concerns about what we're going through, but if we continue just to obey God, we will have a victory. We will learn and put into practice what the writer said in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and gave us a prescription for this pandemic, my people which are called by my name. 
just humble themselves and pray and seek his face, turn from their wicked ways, then we can hear from heaven and God will heal our land. Simon Peter, who obeyed at the master's word, having toiled all night and understood as a true fisherman, a learned fisherman, a knowledgeable fisherman, having uh, fished all night long and caught nothing, said to him, nevertheless, at your words. And they went out again and cast their nets. And they caught such a huge number of fish that they had to beckon for other ships to come along and help them. As a matter of fact, their boats began to sink in the waters. And the number of fish was so great that their nets began to break. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you that God has blessings for you. Already in store that will overflow. And he knows what you need and he knows how much you need, but he has an abundance of supply and he can meet your need according to his riches in glory. Verse 6 tells us that their nets begin to break. And I wanted to lift that up to talk about broken things. Is what you have broken? Is what you've been working with broken? Is what you've been looking for Broken? Has your faith began to decline in this season of pandemic? Is it now broken? Has your relationship with God, because things are not going the way you expect for them to go, has that become broken? Can I tell you again, God's power to bless us is greater than our capacity to contain his blessings. Amen. Verse 8 tells us that when Simon Peter saw what was happening, he fell down on his knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Can I tell you that talking to the Lord will make a difference in your life? Lord, help me here today. Uh, some, some things have brought us to our knees maybe not physically but in our minds and spiritually but I want to tell you that when you're on your knees you're in a good position to just have a, a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles the scripture of the songwriter says he will hear your faintest cry, and he'll answer by and by. On the surface, that appears to be a strange reaction to a wonderful miracle that just occurred. But Peter realizes that he's in the presence of the Lord. He understands his lack of faith and regrets his earlier doubts. Every now and then, we need to pause long enough to think about the goodness of Jesus. And I want to remind you that if you stop long enough and look back over your life, you will realize that you've already come through something worse than what you're going through now. Because God has been faithful to us. I hear the old folks say, as they look back over my life, they wonder how I got over, how I got over, and they realize if it had not been, wish I had some help in it. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Where, where, where would I be? Now I 
I know all of that's not in the text, but they are good reason for us to fall down and repent when we discover that we're in the presence of the Lord. When we experience a lack of faith and when we have no doubts, it's time to repent. And while this is Peter's first encounter with Christ, it will not be his last. Peter is going to walk with the Lord for about three years. He's going to participate in many more miracles. He's going to be a watchful and a witness to what the power of the Lord can do. And still, even with that, you'll find occasions to repent again. Let me tell you, while my Lord and our God was in the throes of execution, Peter, who had been walking with him, had to go and repent. Because you remember when he said, Lord, we're not going to suffer you to die. We know that you are from God and the Son of God. But the Lord said to him, listen, Brother Peter, you're sounding good, but before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. And it's true that Jesus in the throes of execution, Peter, who had walked with him, denied knowing him, and about the time of his third a denial of Christ, the rooster began to crow. Can I tell you, you may be walking with the Lord. You may be a member of the church. You may have a relationship with God. Every now and then, Satan will come and introduce a dose of doubt into you. But I came to tell you today, just hold on and be faithful because God, I said God, be still on the throne. Be still sitting high and he's still looking low. The Lord told the church in Ephesus and in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 2 through 5 he spoke to the church that was in Ephesus and said I know your works I know your labor I know your patience and I know how thou can bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them would say they are apostles and you found them to be not and have found them to be liars the Lord told the church and I know what thou have borne and have patience and for my name's sake you labored and have not fainted nevertheless he told the church I have somewhat against thee because thou left your first love can I tell you every now and then we need to go back and fall in love all over again with our Lord and Savior yes but remember Whence thou art fallen and repent and go back and do your first work or else he said I will come quickly yes and remove the candlestick out of this place except you repent I've got to tell you we need I said we Over again, I heard a songwriter 
say, take me back, take me back to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back to that place where I first, I first believed. Every now and then we need to go back and do our first work so the love that he shed abroad in our hearts. I got to get out of here. But in verse 10 of the text, in the first part, it says, And so were also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, with the partners, with the Brothers were in the fishing business with Simon Peter. Can you imagine the possibility of their relationship? Can can you imagine the business that they may have had? Simon Peter, an associate fisherman of Galilee, or maybe they had a store called fish for less. They could have had cornered the fish market, but all that was changed by broken partnership. They were working with broken things because Jesus, I said Jesus, said to Simon Peter in that same verse, he said, fear not for henceforth thou shalt catch Man, good God Almighty, I'm going to move you from your fishing business and I'm going to put you in the preaching business. You're not going to catch fish, but you're going to catch men. You're not going to catch perch, but you're going to catch people. You're not going to catch souls, but you're going to you're not going to catch trout, but you're going to catch truthfulness. You're not going to go for bass, but you're going for believers. You won't be looking for sardines, but you'll be looking to save souls. You won't be catching the poppies, but you'll be catching the converts. And whatever is broken, whatever is broken, I said whatever is broken, God can put it back together again. I heard, I heard, I believe Andre Crouch saying a song in case you've fallen by the wayside of life. Dreams and visions are shattered. You're broken inside. But you don't have to worry. Stay in the state that you're in. Because the potter wants to put you back together again. In case your situation has turned upside down. And all that you have accomplished is now on the ground. Listen, my friend, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. You may be broken. You may be mending. Give him the fragments of your broken life, my friend. Because the potter, I said the potter, wants to put you back together again I don't care what's broken in your life my God I said my God can take the broken pieces of your life and put it back together again no matter what shape you're in the potter wants to put you back together again he can he will he can, he can, he will, he will, and he can put you back 
are here today. Broken things, broken things, broken things, whatever it's broken. Relationships, marriages, whatever it's broken, families, whatever it's broken. The Lord, the Lord can put it back together again. I want to assure you, while it may seem like a dread, it may seem like things are at a loss. It may appear that things are broken in your life. Our God is able to mend things together again. Let me take a moment to say that those of you watching this stream, or even those of you who may be gathered in this auditorium, that if things are broken in your life, I want you to submit it all to the Lord. He's able, he's able to fix it for you. He specializes in broken things. And I want you to know, whatever it is, God's able to fix it. Let me pray with you, our Father, our God. Thank you for this, your people. I thank you for those who are watching this live stream. I thank you for the word to recognize that broken things don't have to stay shattered, but you are able to mend it all back together again. So, Master, whatever is broken, for these are for those who may be watching. Whatever is broken, we give it to you, Master, because you're the creator of all things. We ask that you amend broken hearts, broken families, broken relationships, broken lives, whatever is necessary to be mended. We put it in your hand. You've got all power to do that which we cannot do. I pray for these, Master, that as we surrender and repent unto you, that you will do that for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Fix every situation. Give peace where there's confusion. Joy where there's sadness. Comfort where there's despair in the name of Jesus. Healing where there is sickness by the power of the blood of the Lamb. We are reminded you are wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, just tithing of our pieces upon you and by your stripes. We are healed. We give it to you. We place it in your hands because we know that you're able to help our situation. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord that we do humbly pray. Thank God. Amen. May God bless you today. I pray that something was said to encourage your heart during this time of this season. And that you will be blessed and that you will be strengthened by the word of God. And until next week, at this same hour, the nine o'clock hour, it's our prayer that God bless you and keep you. And his face shine upon you and give you peace. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.